Hello neighbor, I'm Robert Burns and I wanted to take just a few moments to kind of give you an overall what we'll call tidbits of information here as we wrap up the uh, May 10, uh, 2016 LALB meeting. Uh, first of all, let me bring you up to speed on continuing education, uh, at least formal continuing education uh, offered uh, as a requirement for licensure. Uh, that issue appears to be dead. You will never say never, uh, but at the date that I am filming this, which is May 17th, of 2016. The item has not appeared back on uh, the calendar at <clears throat> the House Commerce Committee. I suppose it might be conceivable that it could go all the way through the entire process in the remaining, I don't know, uh, 13 plus 6, 19 days there are to the session, but I think it would be quite unlikely. Uh, I just wanted to thank you for all of the feedback we got, and we were certainly there, Reverend Phillips and I were certainly there at the legislature to, uh, we had the hard copy printouts uh, to, to uh, advise uh, the committee if it had ever been presented, uh, your sentiments, and of course I think the main reason it was not presented uh, is because it was exposed for what it was, uh, which was an attempt to boost membership at annual LAA conventions. So that will wrap it up for continuing education. Now with regard to, uh, you'll see in a previous video I had mentioned about uh, reports we were getting entailing uh, Jeff Henderson, an LALB member, utilizing the services of unlicensed auctioneer uh, or auctioneers, although I'm only one that I have been made aware of. Uh, but I was told it was on a minimum of three occasions in 2015 and at least one on 2016, that being January the 28th of 2016. We also got your reports about uh, past LALB Chairman Tessa Steinkamp and questions about whether or not she was even eligible to sit on the LALB. Uh, there was some talk about she may reside in Mississippi. Uh, Reverend Phillips uh, did want that matter researched and assigned me to look into it. Uh, I did so. Uh, it does turn out that uh, Ms. Steinkamp and her husband, Kurt, uh, do own property in Pearl River, Mississippi. Uh, we're going to give you links to the uh, two tax assessments that say that the property is occupied. Uh, I will say this, uh, in every instance in which Ms. Steinkamp was sued over uh, by Reverend Phillips and I entailing uh, open meetings violations, not one single time. Uh, was she able to be served at the address that she lists in Slidell, Louisiana? Uh, we have handwritten notations from the sheriff attempting service uh, saying that Ms. Steinkamp's mother uh, would come to the door and would not uh, open the door for the sheriff uh, and, would, and the sheriff made the notation that Ms. Steinkamp would pick it up the next morning at the sheriff's station. Look, I don't know whether Ms. Steinkamp may have been ineligible to serve on the LALB as a result of being a resident of Mississippi. She is a registered voter in St. Tammany Parish, and that is what the LALB goes by. Uh, and so I, I, I don't know as to whether or not there may have been a potential circumvention of the residency requirement there or not. Uh, we were going to proceed forward with more formal exposure of this uh, and, and ask for an investigation by the proper uh, legal authorities. Uh, however, when uh, Governor John Bell Edwards made the decision to dismiss her from the LALB, uh, we opted for the matter to be closed. Let me just say this, if it is accurate and if she has been residing in Pearl River, Mississippi and thus ineligible to, ser to, to uh, serve on the LALB, it would also mean she's been inaccurate on her residency, require her residency statement because as everyone knows, uh, a license, and if you are a resident of Mississippi, is three hundred dollars. It is only one hundred and fifty if you were a Louisiana resident. But even if all of that is true, it's just one more pile of mass corruption that existed under the Steinkamp regime. And and I'll tell you specifically, you know, whenever this whole New Orleans auction gallery thing was blowing up, uh, we have video of Miss Edmonds saying, and I quote. Well, we only received five complaints. We only got we only got calls from five or six people, and not even all of those filed complaints. Okay, all right. And then a few months later, we've got Miss Steinkamp on video. Oh, um, I'm insisting upon this pay raise for Miss Edmonds. I am the one who is pushing this. I am the one who is saying that Miss Edmonds needs to have a pay raise. Yes, I will suggest there was an ad pro quo on that. Miss Edmonds ran interference for. New Orleans Auction Gallery, she, by her own admission, she said, oh, 
though we only had five or six people to contact us and not all of them filed complaints. All right. Let me ask you this, Joe Smuck Auctioneer. How about you go out there and try having a half a million dollars in unpaid consigners? How about you, Joe Smuck Auctioneer, go out there and try paying company operating expenses with consigner escrowed funds? How about you, Joe Smuck Auctioneer, going out there and having paintings auctioned for over a hundred thousand dollars. I will repeat that. Auction for over one hundred thousand dollars. And they have Christie's rejection stickers on the back of them as forgeries and it was known at the time they were auctioned. All right. Ms. Steinkamp on a video at an LALB meeting when Reverend Phillips brought up a Los Angeles lawsuit happens to be by a gentleman named Massad Puritan. He's the one that lost over $100,000 as a result of those fake paintings. Ms. Ms. Uh, Steinkamp said, oh yes, I'm aware of that, but it's not relevant. Whoa! Not relevant. Wow. What a statement. So even if the reports of Ms. Steinkamp not being a resident of Louisiana and in fact resided in Mississippi are accurate, uh, it, it's just going to be one more pile of mass corruption that was perpetrated under her regime with the direct assistance of LALB attorney Anna Dow and executive assistant or executive director, whatever she wants to call herself, Sandy Edmonds. It was an environment of rank, pure corruption okay so at this point I guess it's a moot point with Miss Steinkamp no longer being uh, n not even on the LALB much less chairman now uh, the only other tidbit I have left for you uh, we are going to in a probably six seven eight days or so we're gonna put out another special feature on this whole episode of Henderson auctions and the lawsuit involving Blake and Sam Everett I'm telling you, I know I said it before, things are going fast and furious. It's getting extremely interesting. You will not want to miss that episode. So that'll wrap up the tidbits from the May 10th, 2016 LALB meeting. And we look forward to again reporting to you in the very near future on the Henderson Auctions and Blake Everett and Sam Everett lawsuits in, in uh, the Middle District of Louisiana Federal Court. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen.